Karate Kid Part 3, <laughs> the 35th anniversary. It was released on June 30th, 1989. It came out. Sean, we have questions. We know you got answers, sir. So I just need to know, well, I, I, I've heard different, like, how did you first get involved in the film? So you read online, you know, you see the Wikipedia, but you're like, you can only guess that half of that's true. But, you know, like you were chosen out of 200 hopefuls, but I was kind of curious. 200. What, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Okay. 10,000. <laughs> 10,000. I'm sorry. Yes. There were 2,000, there were 2000 at, the, um, at the open call. And, you know, uh, I was doing an interview before season five on the set of Bold and Beautiful with Entertainment Tonight. And I said, you know, it's really funny how things come full circle. When I auditioned, when I screen tested back in 88, 1988, um, Entertainment Tonight interviewed me. And the guy who was the host said, you know, we've got this extensive vault of footage. We're going to find that. And they actually found it. So if you go on YouTube and you put Sean Cannon Entertainment Tonight, you can see the actual moment when John Abelson comes up to me in line my voice is like three octaves higher. I've got like the, the golden helmet, feathered hair and everything. Yeah. And, you, had, uh, you had the hair at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. They bring me, uh, you know, inside to, um, I, I do an interview with uh, Entertainment Tonight. I screen test with Ralph. And I hadn't seen that in like 35 years. And I think when you have seminal memories in your head of, of really important moments, you know, they they morph and change as time goes along. But as I watched this video, my recollection of what happened was really accurate because it was such a profound moment of my life. And so you can you can actually watch it and see what happened. Um, I uh, came out to Los Angeles May 20th, 1987 to start my acting career. Um, I was finishing uh, university at UCLA. Uh, getting my degree in political science, but I was sort of one foot in, one foot out because I was auditioning and I was working a little bit. Um, I did graduate and then the, the open call came for Karate Kid 3 and I tried to usurp the open call. I went to the casting director's office. Her name is Carol Jones. And I said, hey, I'm a, I'm a real actor. I've got my SAG card. I've done like one episode of a show that like shortly thereafter went off the air can i audition for you and she was like no go wait in line what? and i was like okay and so yeah I, I i showed up in the studio and there were just like throngs of people and you know john abelson who had directed uh the karate kid and karate kid 2 and won the oscar for rocky was making his way up this line and you know i'll tell you there most times in life success takes a lot of time and then builds to critical mass and something happens. And then there are occasional times in life when things unfold in a couple of seconds. And I knew this was one of those times that I had a couple of seconds to get this guy's attention. And sure enough, John Allison stopped in front of me and asked me to do a little improv with him, which I did. And he wow. said, well, I buy he said, I buy it. And he sent me inside. And then I went inside and I screen tested with Ralph Macchio and, I thought I did really well. And um, I unfortunately found out about a week later, they didn't hire me and I was crushed. And as luck would have it about 10 days later, they fired the guy that they hired and they called me back. They didn't tell me they were calling me back to give me the role. They just called me to the producer's office. I'm driving through some, you know, Sunset Boulevard through Hollywood, you know, down around Barham to uh, go to the studio just knowing, okay, this has to be good. They're not calling to tell me I didn't get the role again. <laughs> um, I, you know, maybe it's like a, a, a buddy, a henchman, something. And I went into Sheldon Schrager's office, who was the executive in charge of production. And John Abelson was there. And Robert Mark Kamen was there. And Robert had me do some basic martial arts moves. And then they went inside an adjacent room. They left the door open so I could kind of hear them talking. And I'm just like, dying you know I'm of just course dying. and then and then they said to me all right you got the job this is what you're getting paid go to wardrobe it was like so quick wow. i didn't have time to parents you know I what's mean, amazing would... about that too is yeah. uh i mean nobody will ever know that feeling unless you're in that situation yeah. and and just as a new actor is and to do that is just a testament i think of, of your skill and how good you are because if you put yourself in the mindset at the time Karate Kid 3 was like shooting a a Rocky 3 or a Ghostbusters 3 at the time. It was a 
one of the biggest franchises and John Avelson, of course, um, to have that many people, of course, it's going to be packed. And for you to to get in there and and rightfully so is just uh, just a testament of how great of an actor you are. And I, I just wow. I couldn't imagine having that that mindset of right. being let down and then it yeah. turns around. You know, you know, actors have we sort of have this saying that, you know, sometimes when you look at the Hollywood sign, it it smirks at you and other times it smells at <laughs> you. And I, I, within the course of two weeks, I had both experiences, you know, finding out that I didn't get the role and, and just feeling crushed, you know, and I could see the Hollywood sign from where I, you know, lived around on sunset. And it just was like a reminder of, you know, you're in LA and is this ever going to happen? And then when I got the role driving back that night, back to my shitty little apartment above the whiskey a go-go on North Clark street, like the lights seemed brighter. Everything glowed. I, it was like, I could see the Hollywood. It was, it was just, it was kind of surreal. And I didn't know what I was in for, but I knew it was going to be big and I knew it was going to be life-changing. And it certainly was in many, many different ways. I'll be curious Amazing. what the, the process was like, because I assume as an actor, you would like time to prepare. And obviously you don't, you don't have that luxury. And sometimes that might be more of a serendipitous <laughs> case where you're kind of kind of thrown into it. But what, what was we, the process? We did, have, we did have time to prepare. Um, we had about a month of um, rehearsal and uh, extensive martial arts training, but mostly, you know, the choreography. I mean, I had I probably had four fights in the thing. I can't remember exactly, including the big final fight at the All Valley Tournament where I had two fights, I think. I, I fought a preliminary guy and then I fought Ralph. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've got to learn this individual, these individual sets of choreography for all of these. And the most important thing is that nobody gets hurt. And um, so there's a lot to learn. A month sounds like it's a long time, but it really went by very, very quickly. I can't imagine. Yeah. And and, and uh, to have uh, that kind of adulation and responsibility, how long were you already like, did you move out to Los Angeles to try to make it and all that stuff? Well, like, I moved out, was... like I said, I moved out May 20th, 1987. I wound up doing a really shitty horror film that my manager begged me not to do, but I was just so eager to get my feet wet. I did that. And then I booked a guest star on a show for Fox called Werewolf. Um, and, and ironically, um, the other co-star on the show was a really close friend of Billy Zabka's and Billy came to the set. So I met Billy in 1988. Uh, and I was, you know, I was kind of starstruck. I was like, oh, it's Johnny Lawrence, you know, <laughs> and, and as luck would have it, um, within a year later, um, you know, I was a part of the franchise. And it's just funny. That's, you know, that's the thing about this business. It is ridiculously difficult and it's not fair. And there's a lot of frustration and disappointment. But on any given day, your life can change. 180 degrees um and you know that's why it's so important to stay in the process and not in the results 